Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance EV. Today we're talking about CV joints, axles and drive shafts. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. The last few episodes we've been looking at the Nissan LEAF side of things, so getting the motor working with the new um, logic board and getting my head around all that. Still have a lot of work to do on that, but I've done enough to prove to myself that everything's in good shape and working the way it should. So now we can move on to some of the other parts of this conversion. So the next step really is to take that engine or that motor rather that electric motor that we know now works and figure out how to mount it within the 911 and I'll be doing some videos in the next few weeks going through the specifics of the motor itself but the other side of things and it does drive the the placement of the motor is how we actually get drive to the rear wheels so to that end I've got a bit of digging around to do now looking at the drive shafts from and CV joints from the two different motors so obviously we've got Porsche on one side of the the equation with the wheels and axles that um, that need to be turned and then we've got what's doing the turning which is the leaf and that's a different a different set of fittings a different set of components so what we're going to do today is look at the two sets of components, start to dis disassemble uh, parts of them just to see what, how they work. Um, so then I can start thinking about how we'll actually get them to, to meet in the middle and to, to work together. With a lot of brute force and a very long breaker bar, I managed to get the bolt, the nuts on the, um, the axles to release. So. This will allow us to take the drive shafts out and we can look at what we're dealing with then in terms of getting them to fit against the leaf. There we have one Porsche half shaft. All right, so today we're talking about drive shafts or specifically in what we're doing here, half shafts. Um, so with any car, you need to get the power from the motor via the gearbox to the wheels. Um, whether that's you know with a main drive shaft running the length of the car from the front to the back and then half shafts from the diff out to the individual wheels or in the case of the Porsche, where the shafts run uh, straight from the gearbox out to the individual wheels. And likewise in the Leaf, where essentially the same thing happens. The gearbox is a lot simpler, it's only one gear, but it's going from the gearbox out to the um, wheels directly. So we've got here are the two Porsche um, half shafts. So this end, ties up to the gearbox and then this end goes into the wheels you've got the two CV joints in the middle. We've essentially got the same thing for the leaf. Um, in this case this end goes out to the wheels then you've got the shaft itself and it meets up and connects into the um, into the gearbox. There's a slight difference on the leaf one in that they're not quite symmetrical so the the gearbox hangs off the side of the motor um, so in order to make the actual shafts themselves about the same size this is an extension piece on one side with a little bearing here which sits within a mounting on the, um, the side of the engine. From our perspective this actually 
essentially goes out the window because we're not going to have the motor in the same orientation or exactly the same spacing left to right as in the leaf so we're essentially starting from scratch and somehow we need to find a way to get the motor side from the leaf and the wheel side from the Porsche to meet up. I have no idea how we're going to do it. So as I said the, the drive shafts essentially consist of a few different components. So with all of them you've got something that connects them to the where the drive is coming from. So in this case it's a, a splined shaft that goes into the gearbox. The leaf on the um, Porsche it, it bolts in with um, six, six bolts. But the principle is the same. Power, this thing spins. So in all cases there's something spinning. But car axles aren't static, they do move up and down. So you've got the CV joints which allow a range of motion while still turning. And you've got one either side so that it doesn't affect the camber of the wheel if the suspension moves up and down. Um, some older cars might only have the CV joint on one side and then the wheel ends up with a very strange camber if the um, suspension's under load or not, which can affect steering. But again, principle's the same with the Porsche one. So you've got a CV joint on the um, car side or the engine side and a CV joint on the um, wheel side. So what we're gonna do is essentially dismantle these things um, and look at what we're dealing with, what components we've got and see what we can actually use. Um, you know, are any of the spline patterns similar? And that sort of thing. Uh, it's highly likely that for the final product we'll need to get a custom half shaft made, but if for the moment we can get away with jamming something together so that we can get the car moving under its own steam, that at least then means that we can get accurate measurements if we are going to have to get something made up. So I've already started taking one of these apart. So essentially this particular leaf one was the same up to about here as on both sides. So I took off the CV boot, constant velocity boot, so this keeps the grease from inside the CV joint from getting anywhere else and also stops dirt from getting into it. So taking that off and that leaves us then with a couple of parts. So the leaf unit basically has three um, rotating discs with a good range of motion. The splined hub on the shaft itself fits onto here and then that slots inside the shaft, inside the, um, the piece here and that gives us our range of motion. So if we were to take the leaf shaft apart, um, the shaft itself has a splined end here, which slots into this piece here. This piece then has um, three discs around it, which have bearings in them and also have a range of motion. And that allows the shaft to move within this and stay at the same orientation while this piece is rotating. So this piece is essential, this piece fits into our leaf gearbox. Um, this one we can't really mess around with. Um, this has to be part of the final solution ultimately, as will 
these parts here. It's where we potentially get a bit more freedom is when we start talking about the shaft itself. As long as the diameter is the same as this and the spline pattern is the same, you could essentially fit anything into this. So that's one piece we need to look at. So let's dig a bit deeper. So for now, we're going to take a look at the other end of the leaf setup and then we'll take a look at the Porsche. So first job we need to do on this end is get off the, the CV boots. So basically there's a clip through this little ring here. I need to stretch this out enough that it'll uh, come off. Or we can just slide it off this way. So this is one of those jobs that's definitely much easier if you've got the right tools to begin with. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's a slightly different setup on this end of the shaft. You can see there are six balls here and they move within grooves on the inner and outer parts of the joint and they're held in place by a sort of cage. So this is what's called a cross groove CV joint and that differs from what's on the other end of the shaft which is what's known as a tripod style CV joint. It's not uncommon for manufacturers to have different styles on the two different ends of the drive shafts. So ultimately we'll clean this out and repack it. I don't know if you can see there the ends of the splines as they fit into the um, into the joint. So one difference with this uh, Porsche unit, and this isn't the design, this is just because it's old and has suffered a tough life, is it does not move freely. Um, so if we're going to reuse this, I'm going to really going to have to take it apart and clean it up make sure there's no grit and stuff in it and then before repacking it um which is fine i've probably done that anyway but yeah now i'm doubly sure i have to do it so that's what that side looks like well as i said we'll clean it out probably off camera so that i can then uh, just show you the inner workings so let's take a look at this side This side again is a similar kind of ball bearing based version. Again, really grabby. Um, I'm guessing there's just a ton of junk in there. Um, so again, we'll get this cleaned out and then see what, um, what the inside looks like. So here's a look at what the inside of the CV joint looks like. It's the same thing inside this, but this side's easier to, um, to show. So I'm going to just basically start to pop it apart and then we'll um, clean everything up. So you've got kind of the outer side of it. You've got the cage, you've got the balls, and then you've got the inner piece. and that just gives us the full range of motion. But now that I've taken this side off, oh, there we go. So then on this here, there's a little circlip there, um, which I guess stops this from flying off. So that would need to come off before anything could be done to take this off the shaft. 
so from what I can see so far, the um, there's no real direct compatibility between any of the components on the Porsche um, shafts and the leaf ones. To be honest, I didn't expect there to be, but all of the spline patterns are slightly different sizes. Um, the threads on the axle shafts themselves are different and the splines on the and diameter of the shafts as they actually go into the CV joints are all different. So I think short term solution just to mock things up is probably going to be to chop a Porsche shaft, chop a leaf one and weld them together um, and then ultimately get some something custom made up uh, that blends the two sets of components. That was a really interesting, if somewhat messy, few hours. Um, a lot learned, but probably more questions raised than answered. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable now about how the different drive shafts work, um, how the drive comes from them, and how it goes to the wheels. Uh, the challenge is going to be how we actually get them to connect together uh, between the, the motor and the car. Now, I don't want to go making any kind of knee-jerk reactions and just starting to cut and weld things um, straight away. I think what I need to do is figure out exactly how the motor is going to fit within the car and what orientation it's going to be. And then I can apply what I've learned today to try and figure out what the best um, best option is for actually connecting the the output from the leaf motor to the Porsche wheels. Um, there's a very good chance that this will be, as with a lot of things on this, quite iterative. There might be something that I can do just to get things up and running, but then if I want it to work safely and to um, be able to to run for a long time, then I may have to to go with a slightly different option. But for the moment, I think I've got enough components to work with. Um, we'll just need to see where the motor ends up, what kind of orientation it's in, what way it's facing, how what the distances are between the um, the outputs from the leaf motor and the the wheels. So then I can figure out exactly what I'm what I need to do here, both short term and long term. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a a work in progress. So for now I just want to say thanks for joining me um, and I hope that you'll continue to to watch the the videos that I'm putting out. Um, I hope you've liked this content and if you have and you aren't already subscribed please consider subscribing. Um, we we're trying to trying to get through this stuff as much as possible and show every possible um, aspect of it even if the uh, the answers aren't instantly obvious. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.